Over the last couple of months I've been writing a GPS receiver in MATLAB. For that I first needed a baseband recording of the RF spectrum around 1.6 GHz. This is where the L1 GPS signals live. To do that I used a software defined radio or SDR receiver to make the recording. I made a 19 second recording and have been working on that single recording up until yesterday. With this baseband recording it allowed me to experiment and write acquisition, tracking, decoding and solution solving code needed to make the GPS receiver run. This project isn't meant to be practical, it's slow and I still need to download navigation data from the net to calculate satellite positions. However, for me it gives me a way to experiment with GPS and have total control on receiver design. In this video I'll show you the outside setup for today, capturing a baseband signal using SDR Uno and the slow process of the MATLAB code as it calculates positions from the baseband recording. I put the GPS antenna on the rafter over there. It's about two and a half meters from where I had it last time, which was there, which I've marked it with an X. Um, it comes down into the SDR play. Um, this one Darren kindly sent to me from the UK. Um, this one has uh, a T-bias inside, so I don't have to muck around with external circuitry powering the GPS antenna. Um, and it also has a temperature compensated crystal oscillator. Um, which means it's a lot more stable and it has better filtering, I believe. Um, so far, it seems to be a lot better than this. Um, I um, yeah, had a lot better success with that. So thank you very much for that. Um, and that then comes into the house. And under the, into the computer, under, under the desk. This is SDR Uno, the software that comes with SDR Play. I've set the bandwidth to 8 MHz, couple of notch filters, maximum gain, and under the settings I've selected uh, bulk transfer, as I believe Isochronous is more um, likely to suffer from uh, packet drops than um, bulk transfer. Um, there's an 11 kHz offset which we need to know for the MATLAB implementation of the GPS receiver. Um, and that's the frequency it's tuned to, the GPS L1 band. So we start it up. Um, as you can see, there's no signal. Well, there's no visible signal, even though there's actually a lot there. Uh, we start the recording. Uh, and we'll record about 30 seconds worth. I think that's about a gigabit. A gigabyte. So now we've recorded the signal. We can shut down SDR Uno and uh, move it over to um, MATLAB. I've copied over the SDR Uno recording onto the desktop. Uh, it's an IQ file and WAV format. This is um, the MATLAB program that is a GPS receiver. I have put its file name in there of the SDR Uno recording. It's going to have to first figure out what satellites are visible and then it's going to have to um, demodulate the signals and track them, uh, work out some of the navigation data um, and then um, calculate solutions. So the first thing I have to do is search for satellites. So I'm going to get to search for satellites by um, saying yes, search for detectable. And I'm only going to look at the first two seconds of the audio because you really don't need much for this. But it is time consuming because it has to look at each satellite one at a time, or uh, well, each possible satellite PRN one at a time. And there are 20, uh, 32 different PRN numbers. For each one of them it has to do a 2D search in carrier frequency and PRN phase. So you have a PRN and you're sliding it over um, uh, the incoming audio and you're also changing the free carrier frequency. Um, so it's using a, a fast Fourier method to do that to make it reasonably quick but it's still a fairly slow process. 
uh, and then it's just coming out with the correlation, the, the biggest correlation value it can find. So here, anything it looks like anything above about 0 0.0029 is probably a signal. The higher the number, the higher the correlation means the more likely it is to be a signal. So 2 looks like it is a signal, but it's a fairly weak one. Um, then we have 3, which is definitely 1. 6 is a signal. And 28 is a signal. Okay, we'll stop it there. These are the satellites it reckons are in view, ordered from strongest to weakest. 12 and 6 is reckoning are the strongest signals. I reckon the last three are, are not strong enough. So um, I'm only going to use um, the first eight satellites. These are the ones. So it's quite a good catch. There's the 11 kilohertz offset I mentioned in SDR Uno. Um, so now we don't have to search for them ever again. We can write false. And I've already copied over um, the SVs, um, the PRNs that I've heard. So the next thing to do is to find a subframe. So if a subframe is uh, 10 words, which is takes 6 seconds. So we need at least 12 seconds to guarantee we're going to fit something 6, six seconds inside it. So I'll run that, which will track it, and you can see it's um, decoded a subframe. And it says, yeah, you're a good subframe. So if there was any, each one of these is a word. If any of them were um, a bad word, um, you'd have an asterisk next to them. Asterisk. What it first does is it does a 2D search using this PRN number. From that, it it um, calculates the, the frequency and the, fa and the PRN phase, um, which is the two things it's searching for. And it also calculates the AGC value, which uh, so from that it then tracks it, then finds the bit synchronization, which is the, um, effectively the symbol tracking. Um, and from that it demodulates the, the, the symbols that are coming out from that. Um, and you can see the time, it gets the time a week, and the subframe. So it's subframe for on a Tuesday, just after midnight, which is about the middle of the day here. So what I now have to do is, I want a lot of, I want better points. So I'm going to run through about 29 seconds of this. I'm going to load 29 seconds of the IQ file into it. And I'm going to run through not just satellite six, but every single other one. And once I have found the subframe, I then can resolve the ambiguity of uh, the PRN sequence number. And that gives you an amazing accuracy down to nanoseconds of being able to know the transmission time. However, there are catches that it's traveling through space and through the, um, the ionosphere, which distorts things as well as the clock on the GPS, uh, on the, um, the satellite is not perfectly accurate, so you have to account for that. And there's all sorts of corrections you have to make. Um, without making those corrections, you will be hundreds and hundreds of kilometers out. I tried it and, uh, from a signal from a couple of months ago, and I turned out to be 700 kilometers out. So you'll still know what part of the world you are in, but it's, you're not going to have particularly good accuracy. Anyway, I digress. So um, I'm going to run. I'm going to look at 29 seconds of each um, of this IQ file. I am also going to need the broadcast navigation data. So this is for day 349. I'm getting this from Noah, um, and I go all these all these different folders are. Um, uh, stations around the world. There are just hundreds of stations around the world monitoring these satellites. It's just quite amazing. And they all get put together and the data they receive all gets put in this nice broadcast navigation data. They, they also um, save other data but I'm just interested in the navigation data, the broadcast navigation data. So I will write it to disk 
override it just in case it's newer. They actually update them um, throughout the day, so you do actually have to, um, just because you have them on your computer doesn't necessarily mean you've got the most recent. So now I've got the most recent one of that. Um, that is the navigation data for any, uh, for, for, for the signals that we're receiving. So we can calculate where the satellites are um, at any time around about when we've made this recording. Um, so that's enough information to figure out your position. Technically, if I could get 36 seconds worth, um, I could get the navigation data myself from uh, these subframes. Subframes 2 and 3 contain the ephemerides. So this is subframe 4. They, re they transmit an order, so they go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Subframe 2 and 3 are the juicy ones. They're the ephemerides. And one is also pretty interesting. It'll tell you the week number because you notice from this it's just saying it's Tuesday um, uh, just after midnight, but I don't know what week. Subframe 1 will tell you that. So if you look at all these numbers, um, you can actually tell the, the week. But um, as I know when I record this, I can just write down the week number myself, and that's what I've done. Here, yeah, I've just said, said that the week is 2136. Uh, the week is related to, I think it's 1980 sometime. And each time it finds the subframe, no, it, it then has resolved the ambiguity of the, um, of the PRNNCO. It can put a number to every single chip that it hears. And a PRN is made out of uh, 1,023 chips. And a chip lasts for how long? Um, tiny amount of time. Because this time here is not my time. This is the time the satellite um, transmitted that thing. So um, your time is different. Um, uh, than that. So you, when calculating your position, you're actually calculating the your time as well, um, which is why you need four satellites, not three. Um, one for each degree of freedom. You've got X, Y, Z, and time, so you need four satellites. And this um, uses an iterative least squares solution um, uh, method of finding um, the XYZ time problem, uh, finding your position, finding a position solution. What it does is it effectively guesses where it is. Initially it just says I'm in the center of the earth. It then um, uses that guess to figure out a better solution um, and then it just keeps on doing that um, until it finds a location. Um, that converges really rapidly. It's like 10 iterations and you converge to um, your solution. What else do we have? Integrate and dump class, AGC class, um, carrier tracking class, um, not actually using that one. Um, this is a 2D search again. Bit synchronization class, um, navigation decoder class. Okay, so now it will be calculating the solutions. Yeah, it's real slow this time. It's, that shouldn't have taken about 78 seconds. That should normally take about 30. And those are the solutions. This one is the main one. 
this is northeast up solutions from a bird's eye view. So for a northeast up solution, you need um, a reference location. A reference location I took using uh, Google Earth and found the latitude and longitude of outside my house where I um, I tried making it where the um, the GPS receiver was for um, the first time. Uh, the first one I, I measured. This is the second the second time I've made um, a reasonably good measurement. Um, that's north. Positive numbers means further north, and more positive negative numbers in this direction means more east. And you can then have a look at the data statistics, standard deviations, about a meter, oh, about 0.9 meters. 0.8 meters, 0.9 meters. The solutions it's calculating are 67 solutions per second, uh, which is uh, at a higher rate than any GPS receiver I know of. Um, some I think do 10, 10 solutions a second, but this is doing 67 solutions a second. Um, the downside of that is uh, they spread over a large uh, area, but you get more of them. And in this one, it tells you the distance between the um, the reference location and this location. So that looks about four and a half meters between here and here. So there's another fifteen odd meters um, out from in the vertical direction, one way or the other. But I don't know how a um, accurate the Google um, Earth is for figuring out um, positions. Now, yesterday I, yes, I've saved um, the empty disk. Um, so some solutions from yesterday, which I can overlay on today's ones. This uh, was the place where I said I had the GPS receiver uh, the last time, yesterday, and this is today's one. Um, and the distance between the two, measured with a tape measure from outside, um, was 2.5 meters. But this does not look like that. That looks uh, more like 4 meters. You can see uh, there's 0 meters, 4 meters. So, um, yeah, I measured 2.4. This measures about 4 meters. So that's um, the accuracy I get with this thing. It's a, it's a few meters. I, I, it seems fairly comparable to any other GPS receiver, I think. But um, an interesting way of figuring out the position.